And then our next question is talking about how we've used technology or online resources to overcome some of those challenges. Uh, Larissa, if you could maybe talk a little bit about how you've used technology or maybe some online resources to overcome the challenges that the students face when working together. Okay, yes, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm thinking where to start. I think uh, Heather already mentioned some things that some strategies that we can use from the day one uh, for um, to start the communication. Um, also, it's nice to have this kind of inquiry cycle when they have to figure out uh, what letters is are this and find some words that are like um, international words or sounding the same or words like, a, you know, kino, something that very close to. So that uh, will help to break the ice. Um, if we talk about uh, technology in online resources, I'm just again thinking about my uh, my lessons. And um, I always start uh, with um, discussions and something that students observe, and then they will uh, tell what it is and then um, uh, talk uh, together about this and come up with some conclusions. So there's uh, some kind of routines there too. Um, another thing uh, that um, at home, they can use some grammar drills, uh, listening practice. Um, again, a platform that I use for this uh, asynchronous course and synchronous too is a formative and you can actually record your answers there. Uh, you can record videos, you can uh, record um, answers to the questions. You can listen to that. So listen um, and uh, record your answer. So you don't have to even have a reading and writing involved at first, just uh, like repeating what it says there. Um, so it's um, it helps to practice that. Um, and uh, with grammar and uh, noun cases, verb conjugation, as beneficial to always have this practice, practice and incorporate some drills um, with listening to, not just um, you know reading, but listening to, like even with the letters of alphabet, right? You listen to this and then find the correct one. Uh, for um, non-heritage speakers, especially spending adequate time on phonics is uh, crucial too from the beginning. Um, which it's not always liked by the older students in a, in a high school, for example. They don't like to spend time working on phonics, but giving some examples of how important it is uh, when this one sound makes a whole difference in the meaning, um, then um, encouraging them in a playful way to, uh, um, to do that. Some things like very famous Duolingo for um, the beginners, they can practice that too, um, you know, using the alphabet letters and sounds. And um, as I notice, it's perfecting itself. So it's getting better with time. So the Duolingo program, uh, you can always assign, a make a classroom and be a classroom teacher on a Duolingo. Again, it's, it's a practice for independent practice between classes. Um, and then there's a perk for teachers that if you have a classroom, right, you can um, get an account with all the um, different things uh, that you can study in other language too. So I use that um, to study other languages. And also you can see how many, how much time students spend working on, on sounds, on the words. Um, chat GPT. Um, this is a new tool for me, but I'd like to explore it more too for students to actually practice online speaking part. Uh, right now we can use it for um, students practicing, um, uh, looking at the rules too, but you can type in Russian, like create a dialogue of like a, a, an introduction, like a person introducing itself, uh, herself. And then you can have a dialogue and you can actually have this uh, read to you. For practicing so you can have like a targeted practice practice for different situation um also i know we cannot like rely heavily on that but i think it's very kind of a, a tool that students can use um, if they need to right so they have to just learn how to use it appropriately even with um, advanced levels too um, they can use it for proofreading their writing or um, 
in my advanced class, students were, their task was to, after study this um, uh, period of culture, uh, of Russian culture from uh, ancient Rus to uh, perestroika, they had to compose the uh, monologue of one of the person from the one era. And they did it, they composed this, but they needed, of course, proofreading because it, it was a hard, very hard to, you know, get it all right. And I couldn't, like I had 26 students, I couldn't be uh, in 26 different places to look at this. So I knew that they have their notes and they turn it in notes, but then they can use um, chat DPT to read it through and kind of polish and uh, correct the mistakes. Then they can actually see like, ah, I had to do it this way or this way. Um, also, you can listen to that and they can practice enunciation. So all of this uh, will be um, a technology tools. Of course, there's not only technology tools on, uh, on Zoom, right? We can have a lot of um, different things, even involving the rhythmic patterns for to learning how things work, um, stress patterns, um, one of the example to uh, like my daughter always wondered what is the Kurich Karaba about? <laughs> this is one of the um, like a speckled hen. It's, it's a story that you know, the very first story that uh, read um, in a heritage homes to children. Um, basically, there's the plot is very easy. It's kind of a circle story. It right? goes round and around. And I said, oh, this is a wonderful story for actually to practice the patterns and the pronunciation. Jili, bili, dieda, baba. And then bili, bili, right? So all these different kind of things and the pattern of how you say this is like another, like a poetry, but how you say it and then repeat it too. So it helps too um, if you meet online, even with the beginning students, you can practice these things. Um, one thing that we cannot do online altogether in the class, we cannot sing together at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I complain, I say, oh, please do something about this. Maybe one day we can do that. Uh, right now we can do it only one at a time, but um, they can still practice even with a silencing um, and just say this loud, out loud. Um, I see the, um, you know, lips are moving in a correct way. That means they, <laughs> their pronunciation is correct. Um, and then kind of um, this activity is a lot of activities you can do um, in a, in a game-like tool. Um, uh, so I hope I, I have a lot of um, things under my sleeve, um, but I think that's the main thing is to have these uh, drills at home, use the technology uh, to practice, but also review this and always have these routines during the class. Uh, routines during the class so, and for students to understand that um, this is how we learn and that we need to learn that too. Um, and for heritage speakers, very important to again, know the purpose of that. Um, you know, a, a lot of them say, oh, I know how to speak Russian. Um, and then I'll show them this um, actual letter, you know, what is my proficiency kind of thing with the color coded, um, different things it says okay here's my proficiency level basic user parrot independent user survival um survivor and then reporter and kind of we're looking this okay what do i need to do to get from this level to this level how to level up this really helps uh for students to be serious about um speaking right we're not just looking for right answers it's not yes or no it's Yes, this is the part of the language, and some of them are motivated because when I speak about the exam that's coming up, right, you need to speak. Uh, you need to actually show uh, what you can do with the language. So that's a great motivational tool um, for online classroom as well, when they can actually say where they are and what do they need to do to progress. Absolutely. And standards levels of achievement can be a huge motivator, especially for students who come in and say, oh, I can speak Russian, but then how much can you speak Russian? How much can you use this in your day-to-day -day life? So excellent. Thank you for your thoughts on that, Larissa. And uh, let's go to Evgeny, same question. How do you use technology or online resources to overcome challenges whenever you're fostering learner-to-learner -learner interaction, especially in that online environment? 
Sure. Thank you, Sarah. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank I'm you. Good. Okay. Uh, Excellent. So I think before before we start using technology, and I'm going back to my pre point that I made in the first session, uh, trying to actually avoid technology, uh, if possible, or overuse of technology, I think we should uh, ask ourselves, what are students looking for in education setting in general? What what do they come here for? Or what do they what are, what is what is missing in the online classroom that's present in the offline. Um, and I think that's connection to human beings, exchange of meanings, um, being personal, uh, you know, personal interaction. And so I, th I think we should think about how we can, it's impossible to do it certainly fully to the full extent, but what can we, how can we bring the individuality um who they are uh and help them express it through online um classroom i think we should uh encourage as much as possible uh uh have ex encourage them not to blur the screen for example or use so everybody can see where they are if it's a zoom classroom so I can see this cat walking through this computer. I could see your poster on the wall because I think this little things that makes us humans, not just little, you know, uh, pictures on, on Zoom makes uh, interaction interesting, help us uh, sort of a Oh, um, Heather, I see you have, you know, flag of Texas on your wall. Are you, are you a real Texan or oh, what's the name of that cat? So this moments of spontaneous interaction that can occur and that can happen in real life. Oh, you know, wearing this pin, like what's that pin um, uh, for? So I think we should encourage that as much as possible and have students, I don't know, bring an object. Uh, show an object, kind of a show and tell kind of thing. So they can show that thing that they 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 love. They can show that uh, thing that's standing uh, uh, in in their room and and be in and and express their individuality. And certainly use uh, technology that's available uh, to help that. For example, consider um, doing a WhatsApp group or setting up the WhatsApp group so students have an outlet for um for exchanging meanings through that uh, it doesn't work with every classroom every group every age i i understand all the limitations and i would be the first to discourage us to impose social media the use of social media in the classroom so uh um, I have a lot to say about social media, but not today. But I think WhatsApp, creating uh, online uh, community through WhatsApp, Telegram, or whatever, uh, that will allow students to, I don't know, exchange pictures, comment, you know, something that we do in real life um, that, again, helps kind of enliven, enliven that interaction. I think that's, that's helpful. And I, I had some fantastic... Uh, groups of students for whom that WhatsApp group became or group on the iPhone became sort of a a, a very meaningful community, a very important one. So um, also uh, online tools, we need uh, online tools to structure the interactions to help students kind of a be, create that frame and for that, for example, I like using Google Docs and Google Slides. For example, if the, if it's if it's a group activity where students need to, I don't know, write a story or write several sentences or do something, come up with questions, or I don't know, do produce some 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 text. Um, I would set up uh, a Google uh, uh, slide document and. Uh, group breakout group one would go to slide one breakout group will two will go go to slide two and they will uh right and that in that way google slide will not move for example if you're using google docs um, um, uh, if somebody's typing on the top and somebody's typing on the bottom, you know, 
start things will start, start moving but google slide will help to avoid this problem so that that creating that structure even the, the format the, the the medium through which students will work together uh to produce something will will help them um i also liked using miro um um i can send the link later on my colleagues I, i'm sure you use that 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 tool um uh, at some point it's an online board that again it's 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 really a cool tool that helps you for example set up a gallery um in in my uh group projects that uh we did quite a bit um we you know did an online gallery i would post post like say five pictures um uh, five paintings by russian painters and the assignment was to kind of go through the gallery um pretend your actual gallery kind of a um mimic that conversation that's happening comment on the picture do you like it do you dislike it what do you particularly like about maybe read this uh kind of a synopsis or a little description of the picture and then uh, and then do something else um so miro helps organize or to organize the space helps to create the space and create the structure and then you can use um uh you can duplicate the boards and that, that that's 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 really helpful so uh again on the one hand it's whatever makes us human and that expressing emotions seeing individual selves um whether it's through technology or through just using uh video and audio and or whatever visuals uh we have uh, we have and i certainly would encourage my students to to use the uh the camera and you know again not blur the screen and show us as much of your life as possible because that's really that's interesting that that create that sparkles the conversation so on the one hand there is that and you know and um our our um uh, drive to our desire to to connect with human beings being being with others uh being in the community and on the other, other hand it's the tools that helps us um um organize the uh assignments and create the structure and again they're very simple something we've been using quite a bit uh and that, that do not require training additional um introduction but they can be really effective there's a lot to be said for that human connection, and I completely agree. In fact, thinking back on my own language experience, I wonder if I would have continued down the path and going into those upper level courses if I didn't have the connections with my classmates and from friends that I made who spoke the target language. So there's a lot to be said for that for sure, but we can absolutely use technology to help facilitate those connections, and that's a great way to do it. Thank you, Evgeny. And then, uh, Heather, if you could please share your thoughts. How do you use technology or online resources to overcome the challenges whenever you're dealing with learner, learner interaction, especially in the online world? Okay, thank you. Um, Yevgeny, almost everything you said, I was just nodding um, because I, I feel exactly the same way. I kind of take a similar approach. Um, when I first started designing and building the online course, you know, my first thought was, okay, first of all, like, I don't think I would have volunteered to design an online course way before, you know, everybody was, was uh, familiar with it, but it was the job I was given. And so I thought, well, okay, what is the goal? You know, what are, what is the goal of, you know, first year Russian language instruction? And I started with that and thought, okay, how can I kind of, um, how can I make the technology uh, work for us to achieve the goals that we have for our classes. And um, rather than going out and, you know, finding lots of gadgets or apps, um, I thought, why don't we use what is most available, what we're most familiar with, and um, see if we can just uh, kind of exhaust the possibilities to, to achieve our, um, our end goals. And one of my favorite tools is really just going online. Um, we're online anyway. I tell the students, we're already online. You have your browser open. Let's use some things. Let's, let's find some things. One of our very first uh, tasks, and this is actually also on day one, 
Um, and this helps to promote community and to spark that conversation and, and get people talking and, and excited to get to know each other and to start learning is, um, and, and it also helps me get to know them is I ask, okay, so what, what brings you here? That's, that's part of my first question, but also, um, I ask the students to think of something that they associate with Russian language or culture and go online and find a classroom appropriate image of, of that, that they are willing to share with everyone and say something about. So this is actually where online is actually a little bit better than face-to-face -face because this isn't something you can easily do in the face-to-face -face classroom without like prior planning for like a show and tell. But online, you know, students go and they they find an image of you know Red Square or or whatever it is, and we just share our screen, take turns sharing our screen in Zoom and talking a little bit about it. And of course, we all talk in English, and this invites the students to share what they're comfortable sharing, what's something that you know is exciting to them or interesting to them, and it gives us all a chance to start getting to know each other um, from from day one. And so in, in really starting to build that community from day one is so important in the online classroom because it's so easy, easy to otherwise just um, all fall apart in the ether and, and not really know what's going on or with each other. Um, another, uh, another tool I like to use is Google Slides. Um, Google Docs is great. But Google Slides, just like Yevgeny was saying, is really great um, because you can do exactly what he was saying, send students to breakout rooms and assign them each a slide. So we'll all be in the same document and each breakout room can simultaneously see what the others are working on and work on their own. Um, one of my favorite kind of early activities, I think this is in unit two, um, maybe later, maybe unit four. Uh, I... First, I, I create the slideshow and I find images online of empty apartment rooms. And um, I have, I don't, it depends on how many students, right? I find several images and put one empty room per slide. And then I uh, ask students before we get started with this to brainstorm lists of, of items that, you know, we need for our room. What, what are some common items we put into a bedroom or to a living room or to, you know, a kitchen? Um, and then students can find, either find images or I will provide images of, of these things and they can decorate their rooms with these images, you know, you can use um, images to just copy. What's wonderful about slides is that you can cut and paste images onto these blank rooms and you can decorate a room. So an activity after students are doing this is to come back to the main room or to get into slightly larger groups um, in individual breakout rooms and describe either their own room or somebody else's. So Google Slides is fantastic for these kinds of uh, activities. Um, I also, again, just being online, um, I do scavenger hunts with students and this takes no extra effort, no extra technology when we're, um, first learning numbers zero through 10. Um, I tell students, okay, go online, find the phone number for your favorite restaurant. And these are, can be students from, you know, all over the United States. They don't have to just be here in Austin. So they find the phone number and I, um, their task is to read the phone number in Russian and we all have to, you know, race and look up the phone number and be the first one to find the restaurant. I go first, I read the, the number for Elizabeth Street Cafe, which is this great French Vietnamese place here in Austin. Um, and, you know, students will, they all want to know what this is. They'll, they'll hear me read the number in Russian and look it up and somebody will say, oh, I found it. And I'll share the site and we can say a few words about what this restaurant is. Again, this is another kind of community building activity that does incorporate um, technology and incorporates actual Russian language. Um, and it's fun. And that is, um, like Evgeny was saying, it gets into our real lives and um, kind of... Uh, 
promotes conversation and, and as a result, community. So I guess that's pretty much it that I have to say. I, I try to stay simple. And I'm definitely hearing this common trend of, yes, there's a lot we can do with technology, but ultimately it's that community, it's that human connection that's really helping us to bridge those gaps and, and form connections between us as the educators, but also from student to student. So love that. Thank you. And Olga, again, same question. How do you use technology or online resources to overcome challenges whenever you're fostering learner-to-learner -learner interaction, especially online? Yeah, so and uh, I agree with the, the previous speakers that we do need to focus on the students uh, learning and do not get distracted by tools and technology. But at the same time, I've noticed that uh, what makes it really uh, work in my classroom, whether this is a high school uh, student's classroom or whether it's a college uh, student classroom, is the interaction, right? It's the idea of uh, interactivity. It needs to be... Uh, that's why like, we use a lot of games, we use a lot of interactive activities, uh, we use uh, things that we, we, we engage their bodies, we engage in their space, whether it is uh, online or in person. And that's what I like how Evgeny mentioned about this, because both in our on online classes and in face-to-face in, in -face classes, I would make students do something where they have like to react to things by, I don't know, clapping. It's like, there is something like, у кого есть два кота? If you have two cats, you need to clap, right? If you don't have clap, you like you need to just do something. And I do this also in order, like my one of my uh, issues, right? It's the students' uh, emotional state, right? That's why I was talking about how students can get uh, anxieties and they can be stressed out because of the difficulty of the language, because they're not progressing as fast as they hope they would right because they have they compared to other languages they previously studied so to create this uh, more uh, to give them opportunities to uh, have a little bit of emotional uh, i don't know uh, rest right and mental rest this is important so that's what how i also would in online classes i would use the space it's like like evgeny said okay so now go and find uh, one object uh, behind you or in your room and you need to tell us right for example it's this so uh, this object needs to be related to the our current topic like hobby find something out you which is telling us about your hobby right and then they can show it do a show and tell and that's actually simple right you don't know the, you don't need to to use the technology for this as much however i do we do use um uh specific tools in our language online language classes so for example for our startup students but it's also because we could afford purchasing ipads for every single student in the classroom and this is like two classes of 10 students so we had 10 ipads so we were always using nearpod so this is our primary tool which we chose to use and it allowed uh, to have it interactive right we did all our, instead of slides, this was like our slides were through Nearport and they were not only projecting on the main screen in the classroom, but also on the, on the students' um, iPads or if they're at home, they can also get and sign in into the, using the code and they can, uh, uh, they can interact with this through this app. And why it is great because, and it's probably attached more to, to the next question about feedback, right? It's that we uh, were able to assess our students' individual progress, right? They they have to respond to the specific activity and they, this app near pod, we will record each student's uh, response. And then the, the teacher can see what is going on and then can help those who fail this activity, right? Or who, who, uh, who, who took a much longer time to complete this activity. It also gives you the, an idea of what you need. It's like all formative assessments, right? Like need, it gives an idea to the teacher what to do next, how to support your students, how to help them. And, and um, uh, another, and this is for high school students, uh, so we didn't use it for, for college students, but for um, my uh, regular college uh, classroom, what uh, Heather and uh, Evgeny uh, are using with uh, Google Slides, I use with uh, Miro, right, Miro board. And um, there are so many activities, and it's interesting that Heather mentioned about the empty room, 
and how my students had to furnish it. So here I just um, uh, copied a few examples of different activities uh, on this mirror board. So one of them, for example, empty rooms. And I also uh, added all these different pieces of furniture and lamps and uh, but paintings, all this stuff. And students would have to drag and drop and furnish their room. And they're doing this as roommates. So it's all, always the, like all these activities have a task-based approach uh, in mind. So there is a specific task. You're renting an apartment. You need, you have limited uh, amount of money. You need to purchase furniture, maybe like used, used one on like, uh, like Russian version of uh, Craigslist, right? And now you, you like need to choose and drag and drop it and see what, so then you all agree, <laughs> despite all of you have different tastes. And, and then they talk, they, they have to communicate in, in Russian, and then they have to, to explain later on, they have to explain and kind of justify their choices to the entire group, report back. So there are some activities where they had to uh, build an itinerary. They were visiting Pittsburgh. So also I created a map of Pittsburgh. I uh, added uh, different images of different uh, places of interest in Pittsburgh, and they had to create an itinerary for their friends who are visiting Pittsburgh, right? Also, they're doing this in small groups, and that's why like interaction, I have a lot of small group activities where students have to be in like two, three. If it is online, they would do this in uh, Zoom rooms, right? And I'll just go uh, and like help them working from one room to another. So there is um, another one when also I used uh, or several of these activities where I also in, in addition to using this interactive whiteboard, I would use authentic resources, so websites. So I would uh, include links. Uh, for example, one of them is the link to uh, packing for the weather. We are traveling all over the uh, Russian Federation, for example, or to former uh, Soviet, uh, post-Soviet countries, right? Former Soviet countries. And then they have specific a uh, specific uh, CD. There is a link to the uh, uh, online website with the weather forecast, like geometry and stuff like this. They will have to go and check the weather, and then uh, put it, uh, write it in notes and on the board. What what is the weather? And then I also prepare uh, uh, images of uh, clothing, and they have empty suitcases, and they have like to to drag these items into the suitcase and also to to uh, to talk about this uh and discuss and kind of getting ready for the trip to this specific town and i think miro is because it's one and students got used to this so i i was trying not to overwhelm me with like other technologies but uh, the one which i used for a long time was flip for video um, and speaking activities right and uh, this was integrated in our learning management system, system Canva, and the students had to not only post, it's always the task is you post your activity, but before you post something, you need to listen to the previous student uh, monologue and follow up, uh, find some, some, something in common or something which differs, right? And then you need you might ask also a couple follow up questions after you've done this part. Then you you uh, record your monologue. So that was how I was always uh, structuring these activities on Flip. And before Flip, unfortunately, Flip is no longer going to be available. Uh, before this, I used another one for many years. It was VoiceThread. So I might have to go back <laughs> and explore. <laughs> I haven't used it in like five years because I was using Flip instead, Flipgrid. So, but this is something also similar where you can leave a voice uh, response uh, questions and students will post questions, for example, and then other students will be responding to these questions which was posted by students. And that was uh, interpersonal communication in a way, right? <laughs> interpersonal speaking. Uh, and in a similar way, my students uh, have been using, and that's what Evgeny mentioned about uh, some kind of social media, right? My students, are use, we use Discord for the Russian program, and there are special channels there for level one in uh, novice students and for intermediate students. And that's when they also post something first about themselves in the beginning of the semester, then they post specific essays or small posts they have to respond they have to ask questions so it's a creating this uh, the social media post uh, model right of inter interpersonal writing not of course in real uh, life right in real time but uh, at least some somehow interactive 
And uh, then I noticed the students, it's also is helpful for building the community. And that's what another thing, right? This challenging online. How do you create this community of students? So that, um, See, I noticed the students start using it for something else. It's like, oh, they will post. I need a partner. Мне нужен партнер для экзамена. Is there anyone who has still hasn't? So it's kind of nice because it created this like semi-formal uh, channel for them to communicate if they need it. Or it's like, oh, I I uh, I cannot find my notes. Or where is the where are the slides for this uh, lesson? Uh, has uh, uh, Olga Mikhailovna already posted them? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of nice. But I see, <laughs> I also saw this. So uh, it's uh, we had access to this. And I think finally, what I would mention, which I was, I use, I was, I started using, I was um, integrating social emotional uh, learning approach in the last uh, couple of years. And last year was my focus in my uh, novice elementary Russian. And I've noticed that that helped a lot. So I started creating uh, uh, different social emotional activities, uh, including affirmations, also, for example, positive habits. And this is one of the activities uh, which I posted on Miro because I started also using them online and especially for online students, start talk students. So they were meeting online through Zoom. We would post this uh, five, choose uh, five uh, habits which you're going to um, to follow for the next 20 weeks because we need to work, work on, on your physical and emotional well-being right and then they will choose and they would commit and they would have to report back is like were you able to commit at least to one of them out of five <laughs> and for how many weeks and stuff like this so uh social emotional uh learning approach uh have been uh, like i've been using and you also in in a regular in-person classroom so but this will be then handouts for example or sometimes i would have a screen and students will have to put like stickers on top so again again to include this physicality you know the tactile aspect of learning and i noticed that's what started helps a lot but with online uh, classes i said they might not touch but they will do whiteboards or they will do i will use the annotation uh in the zoom where they have to do something to put a star do check mark uh write something and I think being engaged being interactive helps a lot and it helps also with the aspect of this like anxieties high anxieties fear to make mistakes because it becomes more um, interactive and more fun like less formal even even though we're still learning right but it, it does uh, help in my classroom there is definitely that need to keep things formal, but also bring fun into it, especially in the online world, I find. So lots of great ideas. Thank you so much for sharing those, Olga. Uh, you touched a little bit upon feedback, and that's actually our next question to ask for the panel. And if, Olga, you'd like to start with that one, that'd be great. 